Hey, what's up folks? So in this video, I'll be covering round four of my 2021 Vegas Open. And yeah, in this game, I was paired against Grandmaster Vladimir Belarus, who is a really strong player. Um, we've played a couple of times before, and it's actually funny, I've had White every single game we've played, and he's beaten me twice, and we made one uh, draw in a crazy game. So yeah, definitely a really tough game for me. One of those games where during the game you're thinking one thing and then afterwards you analyze the game with the engine and it tells you a completely uh, different story. Um, but anyway, I was playing white and I started with d4, knight of six, c4, g6, and he goes for his um, usual king's Indian, which uh, he's pretty much played every single time. And I decided to repeat the line that I played against him a few months ago in the 2021 National Open with h3 and uh, bishop e3, the Karpov system of the uh, Makaganov uh, h3 line. And in that previous game, he played knight d7 and came up with a really interesting idea in the opening. Um, I had since looked at that game, of course, so I was prepared here. Um, so for this game, he decides to deviate and he just castles. Uh, I play bishop e3 and now e5. So he goes for some of the um, kind of more typical uh, continuations here. d5, a5, g4, and this is all pretty typical for this line. Um, the point is that I want to put my knight on g3 and slowly build the king's side attack. So now knight a6, knight e2, and here he plays bishop to d7. And um, yeah, this definitely caught me off guard because I felt like this was a pretty rare move. And um, here I was already trying to figure out what to do. Um, I ended up playing knight to g3, which is, I think, just the most natural move in the position. This is where the knight wants to go. Uh, and now black played knight to c5. And here, yeah, I was already kind of on my own and, and trying to figure out what to do. Um, usually what happens in these positions, or what often happens, is that black will bring this knight to d7 and over to c5 and try to create a uh, counterplay on the queen side this way. And when this kind of thing happens, what white is usually doing is playing for the king side attack. So like bishop e2, h4, h5, takes on g6, bishop h6, this kind of play. And generally white gets a pretty dangerous um, attack here. In the game, black uh, keeps his knight on f6, which is pretty standard. But the thing for me is that, yeah, I just felt so confused in this position because I've worked on these lines quite a bit and... Now all the positions have started to blend in together that I'm like totally mixing up plans at the board, not sure exactly what I'm supposed to do. Um, so I played queen d2, black played c6, and I decided to play f3 here, which is again a very normal move. The idea is to just defend all uh, the pawns on e4 and g4 and then prepare one day h4, h5. The queen can swing over to h2. Um, but this move doesn't really commit white to the attack necessarily because white... Uh, in some cases, can actually just switch gears and play more uh, positionally. Uh, the engine points out here that actually I should have played g5, which I didn't really consider, but the point is that it drives the knight back, and then white plays h4, and the, re the real idea here is that when black takes on d5, white actually wants to take with the knight here. And I never know in what kind of positions it's better to take with the piece, but here I, I do start to see it, because like black's pawn on d6 is going to be very weak. I'm going to be able to castle soon. And yeah, I think white is just going to get a lot of play on uh, the d file. So this was certainly a way for white, I think, to get a nice advantage. Um, I end up going for f3 here. Black pushes a4, just kind of continuing the queen side play. Bishop e2. And yeah, this is where I kind of decided, like, I'm just going to play it solid and not play for the attack. I think it might be missing my last chance to really fight for the advantage here. I think h4 was uh, the critical move in this position, and just playing for the attack. And again, I just wasn't sure mainly if it's going to work out for white um, with Black's Knight still sitting on f6. And in these positions, I've often seen that white just kind of plays a more strategic approach where you go bishop b2, you end up castling kingside, and then kind of like in normal King's Indians, you just start playing on the queen side, right? If we think about the classical King's Indian, usually black is the one that's fighting on the king side and white is attacking on the queen side. Here we've kind of um, mixed things up in the opening where white has been aggressive on the king side first, but now that black has kind of committed themselves and is ready to open up the queen side, it actually kind of makes sense for white to switch gears, put the king on g1, and then bring all of the pieces uh, to the left side of the board. Um, that said, it didn't fully work out for me. So queen a5, rook c1, 
takes takes, rook fc8. Uh, here I decided to castle. Black goes b5. I would say the, the play here was very normal. Um, and here I made this move knight to d1. And yeah, this is an idea I've seen before, but I think it just wasn't all that strong in this position. Uh, the point is to try to trade queens and then, again, bring white's pieces to the queen side and kind of argue that black's bishop on g7, knight on f6, these pieces are kind of misplaced and not ready for the fight. Um, but it is a little bit slow here. Actually, black just plays b4. He decides not to trade queens. Uh, I go knight f2, bishop to b5. And uh, here, after some thought, I decided to play knight to d3. I also thought about bishop takes e5 here, just making this exchange. Um, but then after dc5, what I didn't like is that black's knight is quickly coming to d6. I felt like this would be kind of a nice structure for black. Um, and one day, if I'm not careful, the bishop could uh, get on this diagonal as well. And that could be pretty scary, too. So, yeah, I play knight to d3. Um, black decided to take. Bishop takes knight to d7. And yeah, to be perfectly honest, at this point, I felt like I had a little bit of an edge here. Like I thought I was I was better because again, the, the queen side is opening up and I felt like my pieces are kind of better connected here. And the main thing I wanted to do was just find a way to bring my knight in uh, to the c4 square. So I ended up playing rook fd1. And yeah, the idea is to just open up the square for the knight. And the interesting thing here is that the engine actually just doesn't think white is better at all. It thinks black is totally fine and, and maybe even slightly better. So, yeah, it was one of those things where I, I thought I'm, like, pressing, but it turns out I'm actually maybe even uh, slightly worse, which is uh, kind of interesting. And I'll, I'll tell you guys exactly what I, I think underestimated or misevaluated about the, uh, the position. So bishop f6, uh, knight f1, bishop d8. And here I decide to play bishop takes b5, which was definitely a concrete decision. I was also thinking about queen e2, and the point here was to kind of force black to take on d3, and then after queen takes d3, my plan would be to bring the knight to d2 and c4. I thought if white can get this, then white should be better. Um, but yeah, Stockfish thinks black is absolutely fine after a move like knight to c5 first, or even b3, and white is not getting um, the, the counterplay in time. Um, which, yeah, is a little bit surprising for me, but it does make sense now that Black's bishop has gone into d8, the rooks are connected, um, Black is now just kind of fighting back on uh, the queen side. So, uh, during the game, I thought queen e2 was fine, but I decided to take on b5 um, because I wanted to get this move rook c6 in. And I thought here, again, I may be fighting for some kind of advantage. So the point is that I want to double my rooks on the c-file and take over the c-file. I'm also threatening to take on d6. And if black takes twice, then I'm able to take on d6 at the end. Takes rook takes d6, the knight on d7 is attacked. I thought black probably plays something like knight f8 here. And yeah, I thought white would be at least somewhat better in this endgame. Um, I was going to play, I think, the move rook to c6 just to keep black from activating his own rook, keeping my rook kind of safe, and then again, planning to bring the knight to d2 and c4. And once again, the engine thinks black is absolutely fine. It's totally equal here. And so, yeah, I was just kind of overestimating uh, my chances uh, in this position. Um, as it happened, uh, he actually ends up playing knight to c5, which I did not think was that great because um, it allows me to take on d6. And um, I was expecting bishop to e7, where I, I would just go back rook to c6. I give back the extra pawn, but I thought maybe I can get some pressure with rook to c1. It's also considering actually maybe I can just get away with taking this pawn on b4. I didn't see exactly um, what black is going to do here. So instead, after rook takes d6, he throws in b3, which I think is quite strong because now I can't take on b4 anymore. I play a3, bishop e7, uh, rook c6, and then he just takes twice on c6. And... Um, yeah, I played rook to c1 here, and at this point, I kind of felt like I had blown it, like I, I no longer had any advantage. And in fact, I even thought I was uh, maybe going to be worse here at some point. The engine still thinks it's about equal here, but it is starting to get quite tricky for white. So rook c8 was played, I played queen e2, queen d7, and already black is starting to take over because in the long run, this pawn on b2 is just such a huge weakness. And I think this is what I really underestimated about the position. 
I thought I'm always going to be able to put some pressure on black's queenside using the c4 square, maybe like rook c4, or something like this, but it just never materialized. Um, but in the long run, this b2 pawn ends up being super weak for most of the game and a real hassle to defend this kind of like long-term weakness. So knight d2, uh, rook d8, knight c4, and um, I was expecting knight to d3 here, where I was going to play rook to c3. If rook to d1, black has a nice trick with knight f4, the rook on d1 is hanging with check, and, and this is the queen on e2, so I don't really have time to take anything. So I was going to go rook to c3. The engine thinks after knight f4, black just has a huge advantage um, in this kind of position, because I, I guess white's king just ends up being too weak. The bishop comes into c5, and uh, yeah, it seems like white isn't able to defend the position. I didn't think it was going to be so bad here, and I guess my opponent didn't either, but yeah, I thought that was kind of an interesting point as well. Um, instead, black played queen to b5, just kind of pinning. I played king f1, defending the queen. Um, and now queen to b8. And now, like, black starts shuffling around and we're approaching time trouble. And the thing, uh, the game really gets pretty tough here. Um, so I play rook to d1, just trying to trade rooks. Rook c8, rook d5, just trying to stay active. I, I already felt like, yeah, my position's a little bit shaky here, but... What can you do? I just wanted to kind of keep my pieces in the center and kind of look for any opportunities to um, to simplify uh, in my favor. Uh, knight e6 was played, queen d3. Uh, on knight e6, I can't really take the e5 pawn because I think rook c2 just looked way too dangerous. Uh, and if rook takes e5, then black has rook takes c4. So um, I played queen d3. I thought just kind of solid centralizing move. Queen c7. Um, hitting the knight on c4, and here, yeah, I was kind of counting on this move knight to b6, where I'm hitting the rook, and I might have rook to d7 in uh, coming soon, and yeah, I actually just <laughs> wasn't sure what's going on at this point. I think we're kind of both uh, approaching um, time trouble, so there wasn't a ton of time to calculate here, uh, and then he hits me with this move knight f4, which I completely overlooked, but really kind of highlights the problems with white's position is that uh, my king is just quite exposed, it's quite weak in the long run, and yeah, this move just kind of shows it. So counterattacking the queen on d3, uh, and if I take on f4, which I end up doing in the game, then after queen takes b6, um, black's pieces here are just much more active, and yeah, I think white is already seriously worse. Um, so bishop e3, queen f6, I played queen e2, uh, rook c2, rook d2, queen c6. At this point, I felt like, yeah, black is taking over, but I didn't think things were so bad yet. Um, it, the engine thinks white is lost, <laughs> which, again, I found interesting that I was really kind of, like, overestimating my own chances here. Um, I thought I'm, like, maybe okay, and if anything, like, if black makes, like, the wrong trades and gets into an endgame where my king is closer to the queen side you know, then things could actually be really, really difficult for black. But of course, this, this never happens because my opponent is uh, extremely careful. Um, so queen c6, I don't really want to trade on c2 because I thought black will take with the pawn, bishop c1, and then something like h6 and bishop to g5. This looked very, very scary for me, and I, I didn't think I could really hold it. Um, so I just sit tight, queen to d3. Now black plays rook c1 check, rook to d1. And yeah, to my surprise, uh, trades on d1, but I think my opponent was playing for a trick here that doesn't end up working out. I think objectively, black should just keep the rooks on the board, just improve his position with something like king to g7, and I, I think white has a really difficult defensive task uh, ahead of them. Um, but he goes rook c1, I play rook d1, he trades, queen takes, and now he goes queen b5 check. And here I quickly realized his idea was that he wants me to play queen e2, so that we can trade queens, and then he can snag this pawn on a3 in the end, and then promote uh, the b pawn. Uh, and at first I was like, oh no, <laughs> that's unfortunate. I was thinking about where to move my king, like king f2, bishop h4 check, king g2 maybe, but then my king is kind of further from the action. I wasn't sure, but then I realized actually this endgame is not super clear, because after bishop takes a3, I can play bishop c1 defending the pawn, and then my king is actually very close to approach the queen side. So I thought for a little bit, and I played queen e2. I think we were down to under five minutes here. And uh, unfortunately for me, he started thinking. I was, <laughs> I was hoping he would just bang this one out. Because I think this is why he traded rooks and gave this check, is that he wanted to go for this. But 
Yeah, after bishop c1, I think white is actually holding. Uh, black has to go back, bishop c5, king to d3. And then I was thinking, yeah, if bishop d4 here, I'm just in time with king c4. Otherwise, a3 um, would win the game for black. But here, after a3, I can take on b3. We trade everything on b2. And uh, neither king is close enough to the pawns to, to make a difference here. It's uh, just a draw. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was working for white. And then if a3 first takes and then bishop d4, this looked scary because it looks like b2 is coming. All I have to do is just move the bishop out of the way. And actually, I think white is maybe even slightly better now because b2, I have king c2. And in the meantime, I actually have the outside pass pawn and my pawn is running. And um, yeah, I think black has to be very precise here uh, to hold the game, um, if, if that's possible. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately for me, he ends up just going back queen to c6 and doesn't trade. We keep the game going. But now I thought like, okay, I should be able to, to hold this one. Uh, but unfortunately, it was really tough to play this position in time trouble, as I, I soon found out, because we have the 30 second increment. Um, but this is not really a ton of time to figure out what to do. And yeah, I really started uh, quickly going wrong. So I played bishop to d2. Uh, I just wanted to improve my bishop by putting it on c3. Black played queen f6, played king g2, and now bishop to c5. And yeah, it was a little miffed that I allowed this move because with my bishop on e3, black could never activate his bishop like this. And I thought I'm improving my bishop, but black gets bishop to d4 here. And maybe I can take on d4 and play this position. I wasn't really sure. I didn't really want to give black this pass pawn, so I decide to just shuffle queen c4, queen d6. And now, yeah, I just, like, don't know what to do at this point. Um, I should probably just keep doing nothing with <laughs> queen d3. But I decided to kind of force things with f4. Because um, to me, it looked like uh, this was going to lead to kind of like a drawn queen endgame. And indeed, the queen endgame is drawn. But after king f6, it was kind of tricky for white. And I wasn't able to, to figure it out. Um, now, at first, it looks like black is almost blundered. Because I have takes and g5 check. But... He has king e6, and I was trying to make this work, but yeah, I couldn't quite figure it out. To me, it looked like I have some checks, but I wasn't really sure um, about this position. But yeah, I think this move is pretty accurate, check and queen b4, because it's hard for black to go on this diagonal, because I'll take on a4 with check, and then I can take on b3. Um, but if black wants to avoid the checks, uh, it has to play something like king to d8, but then queen f8 comes with check. So I think this position is, is drawn, but at this point I'm like under a minute and I'm like trying to calculate it and figure it out. And I, I just, yeah, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> it's like, I, I just wasn't sure what's going on there. I ended up playing g5 check kind of out of panic and black plays king e6. And again, like I didn't really know what to do. Uh, if I take on e5, queen takes e5. This end game I think definitely uh, is going to be very risky for white with black's king being more active. Um, so I, I really didn't want to trade queens, but then I was thinking like if I start giving checks Then to me it looked like black's king was escaping the checks and then one day black is going to take on b2 with check or take on g5 with check And yeah, all of a sudden I, I'm just like having huge huge issues here um, And yeah, I end up just playing king f3. I mean really just to make a move not to flag like I couldn't find the move I was happy with my clock was ticking down like under 10 seconds and then I just played king f3 because I was like, well, <laughs> better to make a move rather than flag. Um, but this turns out to be a pretty gruesome gruesome blunder. And in fact, anything was better. h4, taking on e5. Um, white is still drawing because I have a lot of checks in the position. The problem with king f3 is that it gives black a chance to come in with tempo with queen to d1 check. And uh, yeah, now my, my position is just kind of collapsing. e4 and f4 are both going to be hanging. And... Um, yeah, it turns out it's uh, just losing for uh, for white. Uh, if I go king f2, for example, I'll go to the second rank, then black can give this check, and the pawn promotes either on c1 or black will take and push the b-pawn. So I'm forced to uh, stay on the third rank, but now queen to g1 check. I played king e2. Uh, if king d3, then I think queen f1 check, and I'm forced to d2, and black can take on f4 with check. So I played king e2. Queen g2 check, king to d1. Now, I think black has many ways to win. He can just at some point pick up this pawn or take on e4. Um, but he goes with a really clean way, queen c2 check, just forcing the queens off the board and then taking on f4. 
and now it's just a lost king and pawn endgame because black's king is more active and his pawn is super strong. Um, so if I play like b4 or something, black just takes and I'm not really in time because the f pawn is too fast. So since my pawns are fixed on the queen side, uh, my king has to run towards the king side and try to help out here. But um, it was, I, th I think, black as many ways. He, he played f6 and then f5, king d3, king e5, and I just resigned here because, again, my king has to stay kind of connected um, to stop the f pawn. But now black's king is going to be coming in and taking all the pawns on the king side. And yeah, I'm never really able to do anything on the queen side because uh, the pawns are fixed. So I decided to resign as uh, it was over. And uh, yeah, we had another round coming up soon. So at this point, I had to kind of save some, some time and energy. So yeah, definitely a very tough game. And it was really surprising at the end to see that, in fact, you know, I was pretty much worse or defending the whole game. And so the narrative in, in my head was that I'm like slightly better and then somewhere I messed up. Um, but what really happened was that I was worse. And actually, I managed to defend well to get into a, you know, a drawn um, position. Once the, the rooks got traded off the board and we had queen b5, queen e2. And this same game, I, I think objectively is drawn, but it was still difficult um, to hold it. So I'm kind of happy with how I, I guess, held the position. <laughs> but... Yeah, it would have been nice to be able to um, to save the draw at the end, but I think this one was was pretty tough, so I'm not too mad at myself for uh, kind of screwing it up in, in time pressure. I think it was um, just a, kind of a, a difficult position to hold for the whole game. So yeah, it was a real interesting game, and I definitely could have uh, done better at, at various moments, but definitely a good one to analyze further and, and try to learn uh, quite a bit from, because I think it was a pretty uh, instructive loss for me. And it shows that I really need to be more comfortable with these middle games um, and uh, really try to understand some of the plans and ideas uh, a bit deeper. Uh, all right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.